Hey everyone, Jason here from Jason's O Gauge Trains, and today I'm going to be looking at the Lionel 2021 Volume 2 catalog. I'll be flipping through it, giving my thoughts, um, letting you know what I'm going to plan on ordering. Um, some people really enjoy catalog reviews like this on YouTube, some people find them very boring, so you know. Maybe this isn't the video for you, but if you're, if you are interested in watching me flip through it and hearing my thoughts and comments, then, you know, stick with me and we'll, we'll go through it and, and enjoy it together. I've looked through the catalog a couple times already, um, so it's not my first initial impression, but, um, I haven't done one of these before, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's jump in. The first couple pages are usually the same same thing, table of contents, uh, some announcements and features. Then we jump right into O-Scale. And not a big surprise of what the big announcement is. If, if you're plugged into any of the forums or any groups where rumors fly around, you'll know that the Strasbourg number 90 steamer is, is the big announcement in this catalog. So let's get through Anatomy of a Legacy steam engine. And here we go. The uh, 210-0 steamers with a multitude of Strasbourg Railroad versions of the number 90 locomotive. It looks like one, two, three, four, five versions of what's technically Strasbourg number 90. The Great Western, uh, two different versions, and then three different versions of the Strasbourg Railroad number 90. And then there's also a seaboard, and uh, what is that? Osage, Osage? I don't know how to say that, but a lot of my friends are pretty crazy about the Strasbourg Railroad, and I don't blame them. I've been to the museum before um, when I was a little kid. Very cool place. And, um, you know, I haven't been there in a while to enjoy the museum or, or the steamer, Strasbourg number 90. But, um, so for, for that reason, like, I don't have as strong as, of ties to Strasbourg as some other people do. So I'm not going to be ordering this locomotive. Um, and just a friendly reminder for everyone, I do have Lionel Legacy now. So, like, I am in the market for my first legacy engine but i'm not gonna just pick anything right so um but this is this is cool this is really cool the next page are the coaches for the strasburg railroad um these are a tooling lionel acquired from mth um we don't know how much tooling lionel got but we know they, they bought some stuff people were going getting a little overboard on the forums today saying like MTH is shrinking to nothing of a company and Lionel was buying them all out and that's I'm sorry it's ridiculous MTH still has like 80% of the tooling that it had before Mike Wolf retired but anyway I digress uh, very cool coaches to go along with your Strasbourg steamer and then here's some two 80s uh, that New York Central one is really nice anything New York Central speaks to me but I uh, don't think I'll be getting anything on this page either these do have whistle steam which is really cool um, and then cab forwards there's a again it's kind of like a cult following for cab forwards some people just absolutely love these things I never grew up around the territory of the Southern Pacific Railway so these never resonated with me very much I do think they're very cool, but um, for $2,000 a piece, I will be passing. The 412-2s, piece of a locomotive. I mean, look at, look at all those drive wheels. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, all Union Pacific. Um, whistle steam, $16.99 each. Pretty darn pricey. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be going in for one of these either. There's another page of them, and I mean, I should specify, like, 
I don't, I'm not getting them because I think they're a bad product. I just, I don't buy everything there is and I have a limited amount of funds that I spend on trains. So, um, and let's move on to diesels. So that's all the steam already. Um, one thing I'll say about this catalog is that it is a pretty thin catalog, not as much in it as like volume one. And I think that's typical for Lionel, but um, I remember flipping through here the first time today and was kind of like, oh, you no, know, there's not that much. Still some cool stuff though. SD70 Max. I know some buddies are real excited about this. Um, particularly that Conrail uh, CSX patch. I know some people will really like that. Um, and the BNSF executive paint scheme there on the right side of the page, that's really nice too. Um, but again, for me, for $650, uh, I do not see myself buying one of these as my first legacy engine. Now these are pretty cool too, the SD45s, that Norfolk Southern one, I'm, of course, if you know me, I love Norfolk Southern, uh, or at least I love Norfolk Southern up until about 2015. That's kind of where I draw the line and don't really try to model anything after that. But uh, yeah, that high hood, um, an S engine, that's pretty nice. 500 bucks, that's, that's pricey, or I'm sorry, 600 bucks. I saw what I wanted to see, <laughs> 600 bucks. That's a, that's expensive. I know my, that Milwaukee Road diesel is pretty sharp. I know my buddy, Charlie, who loves Milwaukee Road. I know that'll be tempting for him. And Pennsylvania Railroad down there on the bottom right. Um, probably the biggest fan base is Pennsylvania Railroad. So it's so moving on, the DD35. Lionel's done this a few times, so has MTH. They've always been really great models, and I, I saw one run at one of our Detroit three-railer meets recently, and they are badass locomotives, pretty darn cool. And if I'm not mistaken, three of these, so half of these are fantasy schemes. This bottom left UP, I think, is a what if, like if it was, if. I don't think there's one painted with that UP flag on the side. And then the Santa Fe up on the top right and the Alaska Railroad. That Alaska Railroad one is cool. I won't be ordering one of these, but doesn't mean I can't think they're really cool. 700 bucks a piece for the DD35. That's not too terrible. I'm going to go to the next page. Some SW1200 switchers. Um, I'm, I plan to get a little SW switcher from from MTH, but I, I, I don't think I'm going to get one from Lionel. They do pack some a lot a lot into these engines. I mean, they they have smoke and uh, 550 bucks each. Um, there's some cool road names here, but nothing for me. C liners. Uh, this I believe is a tooling acquired by MTH. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember everything, but uh, some cool road names there. Um, Five ninety nine per unit. It looks like some Long Island passenger cars on the bottom. There's another one for New Haven, and here is BNSF Coal Train set. This looks pretty cool. You could get a second one of these. SD70s from the previous page if you wanted to have a couple of them together. Um, I am on a coal car binge, as I'm sure many of you know, and so I will probably get another four pack of the coal cars. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. I look at how many coal cars I have and I just... It makes me sick sometimes too. Um, Burlington Northern Freight set, not really for me, but for looks like eleven $1 hundred dollars, get an engine, three freight cars and a caboose. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal for a legacy engine. This is the K 
Cambria and Indiana Bicentennial Coal Train set. I don't know much about this. I don't know if this is supposed to be based off of a prototype or if it's purely fantasy, but it's not for me. I can tell you that. Grand Canyon Railway Steam Passenger Set. I know a few of my buddies were interested in this one. This actually might uh, might sell really well. Um, not for me, but it looks like the set, which is the steam engine and four cars, is twelve ninety nine, which isn't too bad for a legacy engine and four passenger cars. And then there's the add-on set for three hundred and eighty nine dollars. I mean, trains are expensive, but uh, now you understand why I, I, I wish I could be the guy who just flips through the catalog and just goes, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, but that's not me. <laughs> I have a very uh, real budget. So more, uh, let's see, Woodcoach, two packs, Boston and Maine, Pennsylvania Railroad. Here we go. Now we're into some stuff that I really like. Modern freight cars. I mean, Lionel has done a pretty good job um, releasing some, some nice uh, modern rolling stock. I have a bunch of these already, so I'm probably only going to order one Canadian National, the one on the, the left right here. Um, I already have a Norfolk and Western. Um, I will not get Ann Arbor. I don't want anything Ann Arbor on my railroad. I went to Ohio State. Why would I get anything that says Ann Arbor on it? Um, the Ford stamping car on the bottom left is actually pretty cool. I need to Google that to see if if that's a, a prototype. Regardless, I think it's pretty cool. The Penn Central one's nice, and so is the Western Pacific. So one Canadian national for me, for sure. This is where I started to get disappointed. I get I understand that people really like these graffiti cars and they apparently sell really well for Lionel. I don't like them. If I'm gonna add graffiti, I'll, I'll do it myself. Um, I just, I really wanted two more Norfolk Southern uh, box cars, these high cubes, but uh, Lionel put graffiti on them. So unfortunately they're just not for me. Like I would have bought Two more Conrail and two more Norfolk Southerns, but not with, not with graffiti on them. And again, like, I'm not mad, and I, I understand people really like it, and it, they obviously sell well, but it's just just not for me. Ah, <sighs> some two bay coal cars. Um, I will not be ordering any of those or the covered hoppers on the right. I feel like I've seen these covered hoppers cataloged like 50 times in my lifetime. I guess they sell well. Then we have these uh, flat cars with fire trucks. Um, not really my cup of tea. Some cabooses that look really nice and have, it looks like they have the Wi-Fi camera in them. Uh, I don't know if they've improved that camera, though. I feel like the one time I saw one operate, I wasn't too impressed with the camera quality, but maybe they've improved that. Not sure. Some more cabooses, and then some modern boxcars. Be interested to see how these boxcars come out. I'm not going to pre-order any, but, you know, if, if I see one and I think that they're well, they've been well executed, you know, maybe I'd grab the, the yellow rail box one. And hey, look, more coal cars. Um, I don't know what's going on with this Norfolk Southern like patch. Like, I don't know why it's got this like discoloration as if they patched over another railroad's numbers. I guess maybe that's what they're going for, but um, if that's how they're gonna come, I I'll, I'll be passing on those. Might get a few more UPs, um, but like I said, the number of coal cars I've bought scares me. <laughs> That's it for O scale, which is, you know, like I said, it's a smaller catalog, but it's volume two. So 
that's kind of expected. There's not going to be quite as many offerings. Um, but from what I see, it's going to be one of those auto parts box cars, the high cubes, and maybe a few coal cars. Um, you know, no engines. I know. Just haven't found the right one yet. But uh, still some cool stuff. I know my, my friends who are fans of the Strasbourg Railroad are ecstatic. So I'm happy for them. Getting into O-Gage, I'm just going to flip through this really quick because I don't, I don't buy anything O-Gage. Everything I buy is scale proportion. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's not cool stuff in here. You know, they're, they're doing the Genesis engine. Um, again, I, this might have been an MTH tooling, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, the Hudson's on the left. Those are nice. Some, an army train. Um, some ready to run sets. Um, yeah, these like personalized box cars, not really, not really for me. Um, and some accessories. I do. Lionel makes some nice accessories, and I they've acquired some MTH tooling for accessories as well. So, um, you know that barn looks really nice. And, um, actually, I that I kind of like that gym there. Might have to grab that if I see one. Um, doing the burning house. This is, that's an MTH tooling right there. Um, yeah, we've, we've seen a lot of these before. Um, American Flyer. Uh, obviously, I, I don't do American Flyer. Um, but some cool offerings there if, if you're into American Flyer and S-Gage stuff. And... Um, it looks like that's that's pretty much it. And we're at the end. So that's the Lionel Volume 2 catalog for 2021. And, um, you know, people always start to argue after these catalogs come out, whether it's a good catalog or a terrible catalog. People are, people are so passionate about this hobby, and that's a good thing. But then some people go overboard, and they... They just start fighting with people, you know, almost screaming that, you know, this catalog, this catalog sucks. There's nothing in it for me. I'm not ordering anything. These prices. And then other people are like, you know, oh, thank God, you know, Lionel's the best. They made, they're making the Strasbourg stuff and they're listening to us. And it's like, I, I tend to usually meet somewhere in the middle. You know, it's a good catalog. It's smaller. I've got some friends who are really excited about the offerings. There's a couple things in there that I'm interested in. So, you know, um, let me know what you guys thought of the catalog in the comments below. Uh, you can view this catalog on Lionel's website uh, anytime you want. And uh, we should have the hard copies in our hands shortly as well. So, you know, take a look at the catalog and weigh your options. Uh, look at the pricing and you know, start to decide what you want to pre-order. Anyway, um, would love to hear your feedback on this video as well, because I haven't done a catalog flip through. Um, I don't think there's really too much to it other than go page to page and comment on what I think. But uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think. And uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.